Hello and welcome to polyplane.com. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between polygonal modeling and NURBS modeling, and the benefits and drawbacks of each. So on my screen right now you can see there's a line and a dot. This is to give you an example you might be a little more familiar with. On the left is a Photoshop document and on the right is Illustrator. If I zoom into the Photoshop document, you can see the line and the dot Get really fuzzy. This is because they're raster graphics. On the right in the Illustrator document is the same image only done with vectors. If I zoom into this one you can see it maintains its clarity. This is because a vector graphic is resolution independent. So with Photoshop you're manipulating individual pixels. With Illustrator you're using mathematical equations to depict the drawing with geometric shapes. That's why they can be scaled up and down infinitely with zero detail loss. When computer modeling, you need to maintain the same sort of frame of mind when thinking about what your project is. There are two different main categories of modeling types. There's NURBS and then there's polygonal. Polygonal modeling relies heavily on the resolution of your model, while NURBS doesn't really care. It's doing the same thing you're doing in Illustrator, where you're really just representing the surface with mathematical curves, while the polygonal model is actually using polygons to represent your model. So when you scale that model up, you're scaling up the polygon, therefore increasing the, the distortion of your mesh. So I'll go to wireframe for a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, on the left, the polygonal models are built up of individual polygons. If I go into a shaded view, you can start to see that resolution. How the edges are just built off of one another and they create a segmented sphere. While on the NURB surface, it's nice and smooth no matter how far you go into it. What this boils down to is the decision you have to make as a 3D modeler. Are you modeling a character? Chances are you're probably going to do that with a polygonal based model. Meanwhile, you'd use NURBS if you want to do something that has to have a high degree of accuracy such as a consumer product or a vehicle perhaps, or you just want a really smooth model that you can scale up and down without any sort of distortion. Now, with polygonal modeling, there's a subset of polygonal modeling called sub-D or subdivision modeling, where you can take your geometry and actually increase the surface resolution on the fly and go back and forth between a higher resolution model at a lower resolution model where you can manipulate the parts of your model without bogging down your computer by going down to the lower resolution and then when you're ready to render it out you just increase it back up to the higher resolution. This is very advantageous and can be used for a lot of different applications including character sculpting and toy modeling and that sort of thing. Another advantage to understanding the difference between polygonal modeling and NURBS modeling is it's going to drastically affect your file size. Here you can see I've created a polygonal sphere. On the right I've created a sphere using NURBS. And you can see the difference in file size. The polygonal sphere is 925k while the NURBS is only 225k. And that's just one sphere in a document. Imagine when you start getting really complex curves and surfaces. If file size is something you're concerned about, this is probably something good to keep in mind. A great example of a sub-D polygonal modeler is ZBrush by Pixelogic. As you can see, these models are pretty intense. They've got a lot of detail, and this is because they exploit the use of sub-D modeling, where you can increase the mesh density to really start to get into all those little nooks and crannies that really make details what they are. I highly recommend checking it out. If you go to Pixelogic.com, you can download an evaluation version. It might be a little intimidating at first to learn if it's your first time using any sort of 3D software, but it's well worth the effort. And if you want to do characters, I would highly recommend ZBrush as your first starting point to trying it out. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, look at that guy. Look at that guy. If you look up NURBS on Google and go to the image gallery, you're going to see a lot of different variations of what NURBS can be used for they're typically shown as being used for complex surface design 
um, a lot of automotive type of applications. You'll see a lot of uh, hard surfaces, meaning things that are completely closed off that could be manufactured. So this should give you a good idea of how, how NURBS can be used. It's, it's really for smooth shapes that don't require a huge amount of surface detail, but really have a dynamic look and feel to them. Personally, as I'm an industrial designer, I like to do a lot of product design and furniture design, and I pretty much stick with NURBS. I like to be able to measure my final output and be able to send it to engineers and manufacturers to make things that are actually manufacturable. You can do this with polygons. You can 3D print polygonal models, but you're not going to get the same surface resolution as you would with the NURBS because remember, NURBS is not resolution dependent like polygonal models are. That's the difference that I really want to drive home is that polygonal models are resolution dependent while NURBS are not. If you go on the internet, there's a lot of arguments about the difference between polygonal modeling versus NURBS modeling. I hope that clears it up. Thanks for watching and have a great day.